So in Vegas, it's quite possible we'll be seeing some of the coldest conditions we've had all year, and this will present unique challenges for the tyres. Across the season, we see a huge range of conditions, both in temperature, in atmospheric pressures, uh, but also sort of wet and dry. A lot of the places we go are at sea level, but places like Mexico City, I think, are over 2,000 metres altitude, so big drop in air pressure, and that has quite a big influence on the way we run the car. In terms of dealing with the various temperatures we see at the circuits, uh, one of the rules that's in Formula 1 is we're not allowed fans, so there's no way to force air through the brakes. We can only generate that airflow through the car travelling along the circuit. But it's not just the car we've got to keep cool, it's also the drivers. You know, the drivers are sitting in an environment uh, where it might be humid, temperatures are high, so we've also got to try and keep the drivers cool with the flow that, that comes through the car and over them. And that's also quite a big challenge. The goal that we have with the Pyre unit is to always have optimal performance without any reliability issues. So the operating envelope of the power unit is set by mainly reliability. So that is what we prove out during the pre-season. From a performance standpoint, what we're trying to achieve is maximum performance throughout that envelope so we can adapt to any different weather conditions that we face throughout all the events in the season. Tyres are incredibly sensitive to temperature. Not having the tyres in the correct working window for a given lap can be worth easily tenths of seconds through the lap. So for us, our job is primarily trying to get that tyre and put it in the right window through the lap. All the while, through the session, you have ambient conditions changing uh, and you can be impacted by um, traffic on outlaps, for example, trying to pull you away from that optimum window or that target that you have for a given lap. The tyres are designed to operate in a temperature window and if you can't get them hot enough, that's actually as difficult to deal with as a tyre that's too hot. So if the tyre's really cold, we can get something called cold graining. It rubs away in, in little lumps and that sort of graining loses you grip and it wears the tyre away very quickly. So for us, we have a number of sensors on the car. The first of these are the temperature sensors which look at the surface of the tyre, so we refer to that as surface temperature. And then each team has a standardised part which is within the tyre, and that measures the bulk temperature of the tyre uh, from the inside. And there's a big difference between the two, so the surface temperatures, for example, can be very dynamic, varying by 100 degrees through a corner, for example, uh, whereas the bulk temperatures are much more slow in, in their response. These build over four or five laps. So to start with, uh, each team has tyre blankets and we heat these to 70 degrees for two hours. Uh, that's standardised across the teams and that just heats the tyre up that little bit to get it closer to the working range before it goes onto the track. Then once it's on track, the drivers have a lot of freedom within their outlap for how best to prepare the tyre for the start of the lap so they're not too hot, not too cold, uh, going into that prime pole lap that they're looking for in qualifying. And then in the long run, the main tool that the driver has is management. So just pegging themselves back a little bit through certain corners can bring big, big benefits through their stint. And each team will be looking to optimise where they manage and how they manage for the different conditions through the weekend. Somewhere like Mexico City, where the air density is very low, that gives us challenges in, in cooling, it gives us challenges in terms of trying to generate as much downforce as we possibly can. So Mexico is a circuit which has got a big long straight, but we still run maximum downforce there. Just because the air density is so low, the downforce of the car is low and also the drag compared to a circuit at sea level is low. So the low ambient pressure in Mexico reduces cooling, aero and combustion performance in general. So there are a number of factors which can impact the track temperature beyond just the ambient temperature or the sun. So for example, shadows are a big factor and can cause variation around the track. So this can either come from clouds or in Baku, for example, you get a lot of shadows from buildings, which can cause very different behavior through the different sectors around the track. And then finally, the main one, which can cause a huge difference obviously is rain and making sure that you are prepared for that and have the right tire on at the right time is key for maximizing the performance when the track is very cold and wet. circuit where there's quite a few big stops 
though, we're taking the car from high speed to low speed very quickly. That puts huge heat into the brakes. You're then into a very slow corner, so there's very little air thrown through the brake ducts. As a consequence of that, the brakes don't sort of see that cooling air till they get onto the next straight. And that gives you sort of big challenges, both for the, the brakes themselves, but also the calipers that are controlling the brakes. So as these, are high performance power units. They sadly do not have the wide operating window of any other conventional engine. Running these outside of this envelope, this being cold or hot, will challenge the reliability of the power unit. So this year will be the first year we go to Las Vegas. You might think of Las Vegas as this sort of really hot city, but it's going to be a night race for us. And the sort of temperature range you see at Las Vegas is really hot in the days in the summer and in the winter it's actually uh, freezing in December. So when we go there in November, we will expect to see sort of single digit Celsius temperatures. This being a night race, we'll have to optimise the power unit and generally the car in a way that we have not done the last couple of years. So in Vegas, it's quite possible we'll be seeing some of the coldest conditions we've had all year and this will present unique challenges for the tyres, not just warming them up, but also there are lots of unknowns in terms of how they'll respond and how they'll perform through the long run. So as soon as we hit Vegas for FP1, there's a number of things that we'll be looking at. The first of which is obviously where we fall out in terms of temperature and how we can position not just the tyres in general, but each axle uh, optimally to create a good balance for the car. The second point is looking at how the tyres perform in the long run. So seeing how the unique uh, temperatures in Vegas impact the tyres and just trying to get a feel for which tyres perform best and which ones we'd be looking at running during the race.